Hi there. Welcome to the new tutorial series of WebDriver IO using JavaScript on Lambda Test Channel. My name is Vasik Bamla. I am from uh, Learn Test Automation with Vasik Bamla YouTube channel. I have uh, more than 16 years of experience in testing and test automation field. I am also an open source advocate uh, as I have uh, open sourced uh, different test automation frameworks on my GitHub repository. So in this uh, tutorial series, uh, you will be learning uh, different aspects of WebDriver IO. Uh, where we will uh, go through the, the getting started and installation setup, handling different selectors and elements, uh, wait timeouts, and organizing the tests and using different test tools, handling alerts, frames, and windows, uh, using assertions and uh, different reportings to display the test results, uh, using page object model for our web application and the parallel and cross-browser test execution, running test on cloud, as well as running in the continuous integration environment. So in uh, today's video, we will be looking into the getting started uh, section with WebDriver IO. In this video, we will be looking into the introduction of WebDriver IO, uh, machine setup for WebDriver IO, where you will learn how to set up your machine with the prerequisites. Then we will create a basic WebDriver IO project. And we will configure that WebDriver IO project to run a web automation. And later we will restructure the project to make it easy to maintain. So let's uh, understand what is WebDriver IO. WebDriver IO is an open source test automation tool which is written in TypeScript. You can also use this uh, tool with JavaScript. Uh, WebDriver IO is uh, highly extendable. We can uh, easily use the complex. Uh, a set of commands as well as you can you can add a different helper methods which you can use uh, in your tests and enhance your tests accordingly it is designed to be compatible with different protocols uh, for example webdriver io supports both the webdriver protocol as well as chrome devtools protocol which you can run uh, using puppeteer it is also a feature-rich framework uh, which helps you uh, use different plugins uh, and services and different uh, reporters which are created by the WebDriver IO team as well as the community. Why you should use WebDriver IO? So WebDriver IO helps you in automating web applications for desktop and mobile devices. Uh, you can also automate native and hybrid mobile applications for Android and iOS. You can also automate native desktop-based application, which is developed using Electron.js. You can also write uh, unit tests or component-based tests for your web application, or you can also test uh, extensions created for browsers or uh, VS Code-based extensions. Now let's start with the machine setup for WebDriver. The first step is uh, to install the NVM. NVM is a node version manager. Uh, which helps uh, to manage different versions of Node.js. So now let's uh, install NVM on, a, on your machine. To install NVM, you will first go to the NVM repository, which is on GitHub. In this uh, repository, there is a readme which uh, helps you with uh, different steps uh, of usage. We'll be using the installation step to install this uh, NVM. So we'll copy this curl command, click on this button. And in the terminal, you can just paste the command and press enter. So this will automatically install NVM on one machine. Once this command has been successfully executed, you can run the following command, nvm-v. And you can check the installed version of the NVM. So as you can see, it is successfully installed on my machine 0.39.4. So after installing NVM, we need to install Node.js version 18 LTS. So with NVM, you can use the command NVM list to list all the available versions of Node.js. So before executing, I'll just clear the screen. And these are the different uh, LTS versions which are uh, supported by NVM. So as you can see, against the LTS versions of different names, you will have its corresponding version numbers. So we'll be focusing only to, on the version 18.1. This can have this can have multiple minor versions or patches, so it's better to use the corresponding name for installing. So you just copy this name LTS slash hydrogen, and using the nvm command, you will use nvm install LTS hydrogen. 
and you'll press enter. So this will automatically install the latest Node.js version on your machine. As you can see, it is already installed. It automatically skipped the installation. In your case, it will do the complete installation. Now let's make this uh, Node.js version as the default uh, version. So I'll execute NVM LES default mode. So this will make this current version as the default version for an NVM. So whenever you open a new terminal window, it, this version will be by default selected. After Node.js setup, you need to install VS Code, which is the IDE, which we will be using in this tutorial. To download VS Code, you can download the latest version from code.visualstudio.com. And in the downloads page, you can download the corresponding installation depending on the platform which you are working on. In my case, I am on a Mac machine. I have already installed the Mac version of VS Code. You can download your uh, corresponding platform-specific installer package. Now let's start our first uh, step by, about creating WebDriver IO pack project. So let's create a WebDriver IO project. So on my machine, I have created an empty folder, which is uh, yt-wdio tutorial. So this is an empty project. Uh, I'll eventually be committing this project on GitHub, so it will be available. I'll be sharing the link in the description box below, so you can check this out. To create the WebDriver IO project, let's first go to the WebDriver IO documentation website. So here, I'll just click on Get Started. On this page, I'll be using the command npm init wdio. This command is used when you are in the root directory of an existing project. So I've already created an empty folder. I'll be using this command to create a project inside that folder. So I'll paste this command here in the terminal in VS Code, and I'll press Enter. So this command will open up a configuration wizard for WebDriver IO, which will guide me through creating the project. So it will take some time to initialize the WebDriver IO CLI, and it will ask different questions uh, depending on my output input, it will create the project for me. So the first question it asks is, what type of uh, testing would I will be doing? Whether I'll be doing end-to-end -end testing for web or mobile automation, or I'll be doing component or unit testing, or I'll be doing a desktop testing of electron application, or a desktop testing of Mac OS application, or whether I'll be doing a VS Code extension testing. So in my case, I'll be doing E2E testing of a web application. I'll select that option. Next, where is your automation backend located? So you, there are different options depending on your requirement. You can select those options. In my case, I'll be selecting on my local machine. Next, which environment would you like to automate? So I'll be automating web application. And which browser? I'll be using I'll be using Chrome browser. You can select other browser also if you want to automate on that on that browser. You can select the other browser by pressing the space bar. Uh, in my case, I'll be only using Chrome, so I'll deselect this option by again pressing the space bar and press enter. Next, which uh, framework do you want to use? So WebDriver IO supports three test frameworks. First, Mocha. Jasmine and Cucumber. So here I'll be using Mocha. Uh, do you want to use a compiler? So basically it is asking whether I want any compiler uh, setup for my project. I'll be using Babel compiler, which is uh, useful for JavaScript compiling. And if you want to use a TypeScript setup for your project, you can select TypeScript. I'll be using Babel. Do you want WebDriver IO to automate some, to auto-generate some uh, test files? I would like to get a basic setup done. So let's uh, select yes. Where should you, these files be located? So this default path is uh, good enough. I will just press enter. Do you want to use page objects? Yes, I will be using page objects. Where are your page objects located? So you can select the uh, default, uh, default path for now. We can modify it later on. Now there are different types of reporters which are supported by WebDriver IO. You can see the list here. Here you can also multi-select uh, different different uh, reports if you want to use multiple reports together. In my case, I'll be using only the spec reporter. In your case, you can use multiple reporters and you can set up. Next, uh, do you want to add a plugin to your test 
setup. So there are two plugins which are created, which are supported by WebDriver IO. One is Wait for, and another is Angular component harness. So I'll be using Wait for. I'll I'll click the space bar. And uh, what type of service I'll be required to use setup? So I'll be using the Chrome driver service, which will help me in automating Chrome browser. What is the base URL? I'll use the default base URL. We can modify it later. Do you want to run uh, npm install? Yes, I will uh, want to run the npm install. So this will do the basic installation setup and it will run the npm install for me. So let's wait till this installation gets completed. As you can see, this is the basic project structure which has been created for me. You can see there is a node modules uh, folder which contains all the packages which are installed. And there's a test folder which contains the page objects and uh, the spec files. Spec files are nothing but the test file. You can see the basic uh, test has been created for me. This is the Babel config file, which will help in uh, configuring the compiler for my JavaScript. And this is the package.json, which has been configured with the different dependencies and uh, the script. So I'll just rename this project name. My friend, WDI. Yes. And this is the WebDriver IO config file. Now let's configure the WebDriver IO project for uh, the bottom. So in the WebDriver IO config file, we'll scroll down uh, till the capabilities and check for the capabilities mentioned there. So here we will be automating browser name Chrome. Here we will be automating a web application which will uh, run on the Chrome browser. Next, uh, there is a there should be service for a Chrome driver which will help in uh, uh, automating this uh, application on Chrome browser. This looks fine. Now let's uh, try to run this uh, default test on our machine. So uh, here you can see that they have created a, a basic uh, script which is, which is named as WDIO, and it is running this WDIO conf.js. So let's open the terminal. I clean the terminal and I can run npm run WDI. So there is some issue with Chrome driver 115. The issue is that with uh, Chrome, uh, Chrome browser 115, uh, you can use uh, Chrome for testing browser separately. So this uh, issue is not yet handled with WebDriver IO. So it's better to... So let's downgrade this to 114. I'll just uh, do npm install. Now, after installing, I just clean the uh, terminal and run npm run wdio command again. So this time it works because earlier it was having issue with the new binary so of Chrome driver. So as you can see, the basic test which was auto created for us is running fine. Now let's uh, restructure the project to make it more organized. So this is the basic project uh, which uh, was created by WebDriver IO when we ran the first command for uh, setting up the WebDriver IO project. So now let's organize this uh, in a proper folder structure. So first, let's create a new folder, src. This will contain all the code related to the WebDriver IO. So we don't want it to be scattered everywhere, like uh, the config file is outside in the root folder. We don't want it like that. So let's organize it properly. We created an SRC folder. In the SRC folder, I'll create one more folder called cons. So this folder will contain the config file. I'll just drag and drop that config file in the cons folder. Now in the SRC folder, I'll just drag and drop the test folder. And uh, from the test folder, we don't want page objects to be in the test folder. Let's move it to the SRC folder. Rename this uh, page objects folder to pages. I'll move this uh, test e2e.js to the test folder. I can remove this specs folder. Now, since we have organized our uh, code base uh, in proper folder structures, we need to update the paths uh, in the corresponding files accordingly. So first, let's open the package.json. Here we can see that there is a script which is using the wdio.conf.js. So here we need to update src slash conf slash wdio.conf.js. Second place to update the path is in the conf itself. We need to update this uh, spec file. Now we can use the relative path since it is a 
the conf folder is in uh, in line with the test folder so we can directly do dot dot which will go in the upper folder parent folder and in the parent folder there is a test folder already available and uh, we don't have the spec folder now so we can remove the spec folder now it is star dot js now let's make it more specific like dot e2e dot js that's the pattern which we are having here e2e dot js so all our test cases which we will be creating in this uh, tutorial we will have the e2e dot js as an extension i'll save this file now in the test file i'll just update the pages package uh, since we have uh, renamed page objects to pages, we'll just use pages. And here also, pages. In the page objects, we don't need to change anything because all the files are in the same folder. So you can see like dot slash page dot js has been used. So it is pretty straightforward over there. Now in the documentation, we need to uh, do one more thing. We need to go into the integration and we need to go to auto completion so we want that our ide which is vs code it should enable uh, the auto suggestions for us so that we can whenever we are typing anything on our uh, editor we want the suggestions to come up like in uh, like the example which is shown here so what do we need to do we need to create a js, JS config dot json file i'll copy the file name and in this, uh, I'll just create a new file in the root directory with the same name. And I just need to copy paste the code. So I'll just click on the copy button and paste the code here. So as you can see, some uh, types are being uh, populated over here automatically. So it will automatically help me uh, with the auto suggestions whenever I type the code. Let's check out an example. So if you see, if I do control space and i can see that expect is now available here uh, if you don't do this uh, setting properly this uh, we will find that many things uh, many methods are not available in the auto suggestions so this is one uh, setting which we need to do now let's check out uh, whether our project uh, restructuring has been done properly or not by executing the test so now in the terminal let's execute the test again and we run wdio as you can see, the tests are running fine, and uh, we can be sure that uh, the changes which we have done uh, to restructure the folders uh, of the project is done properly, and everything is running smoothly. So that's it for today's video. If you want to learn more about different topics, uh, you can check out Lambda Test blogs, and you can even check out the Lambda Test community. And if you want to get certified with uh, different uh, test automation tools with Lambda Test, you can check out their certification link uh, where you will be able to see different uh, certification courses which you can undertake and get certified, which will help you grow in your uh, career. If you have any questions for this video, you can uh, DM me on my Twitter or LinkedIn, and you can even uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video.